everyone. My name is Janiqua. I'm Hello. Stephanie. Hello. And I'm Maria. And today we're going to be talking to you about the Adventures of Dentures. And we are um, dental hygiene students at Columbus Tech. So I'm going to give you a little bit about the history of dentures. Dentures were first thought of in 700 BC by the Italians. Um, they started using human teeth or animal teeth as dentures. And so for the human teeth, it became like a market. They would make money from teeth. So people began digging up graves and stealing their teeth mm -hmm. to make money. And the um, people that were really impoverished and poor, they would pull their own teeth and sell those so they would have money for food. And there was a battle of Waterloo in Belgium where 50,000 soldiers died. Mm -hmm. And every single soldier, they took all their teeth to sell them to make dentures. That's a little interesting fact. And then it started experimenting. Um, these, the human teeth or animal teeth, were made popular until the 1800s. But they did start experimenting with different things like ivory in the 1700s. And if you had ivory dentures, you were considered high class. Like many of us have heard George Washington wooden teeth. He actually had ivory teeth. They were made from hippopotamus tusks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the first modern dentures were in 1820. They were done by Claudius Ash, and he did porcelain teeth fused to gold. So it made it more natural and pivoted the teeth better. And today's dentures, we make them from an acrylic base with porcelain teeth. So some statistics, so 96 million um, individuals are indentulous. 23 million are indentulous, are geriatric and fully dentulous. They have no teeth whatsoever. And 12 million are geriatric and indentulous in one arch. So we have many types of dentures. So we have partial, you have fixed partials or removable. So the fixed is gonna be like, it's gonna be used some type of cement to cement them to either their natural teeth or implants that they were placed. Or you can have removable where you can just take those in and out as needed. And then you will have full dentures, which is most likely what y'all often see is the full denture. And it's going to take away, so you're not going to have any natural teeth. And it's going to take away any supporting structures. And so really when you have these dentures, you will not, they won't, their bone will begin to reabsorb because it doesn't have any teeth in it that lets it know it needs to be there. So they replace either a full arch or both arches. And then we have over dentures. We have two types of over dentures. We have um, natural, natural over dentures. So they're gonna have some natural teeth, usually the canines, because those are the strongest teeth. So usually they'll have the canines left, and what they do is just place it over the canine and it'll lock it into place and make it stay stay in better not move a lot and then we have the implant plates the implant plates they won't have any teeth but we want to keep that bone there so oftentimes we will put in an implant so the bone won't reabsorb and we'll put those in the areas of the canine and place the over denture over it and that'll just keep the bone and make it more stable and everything and the implant over dentures are becoming more popular because with natural teeth you still have the ability to get periodontal disease or gum disease and get cavities. So with the implants you don't have that risk of cavities. Okay. So they're just the over dentures are just a great option if they don't want to be able to lose any more teeth. Okay. And so some reasons why they wear dentures is to, obviously we're gonna replace any of the missing teeth, but if you've ever noticed a person with dentures when they don't have their teeth in, their face will look sunken in and it'll look older. So a lot of times people just don't wanna look, don't want to look older, have an older appearance. We wanna help with their self confidence. If you see people without their dentures, they won't smile or cover their mouth all the time. And then it just helps with nutrition like, um, I know you know, with if they just have less teeth, you have to do a softer diet. And a lot of times it's like puddings and jellos, and they're not getting the nutrients.
nutrients that they need from that. So it just helps with their nutrition and their overall health. Okay, and I have a pamphlet that I'm gonna hand out to you all. And it has some lines on the back if you would like to take any notes about what we're talking about. mutans, um, which is what causes oral cavities. Um, so the way the disease process works in your oral cavity is there are proteins and things in your saliva that are made to protect your teeth and your oral cavity to prevent um, periodontitis and cavities from forming. But what happens is after two to four minutes after you brush your teeth, a pellicle begins to form with those proteins and is initiated as a protective factor but what happens is it also allows other things to adhere to the tooth surface. So that pellicle forms up on the tooth within two to four minutes after you brush your teeth and then it starts collecting things. And so bacteria like to attach to it. Um, you have, um, okay, so you have this insoluble coating over these teeth and the bacteria will start to adhere to it. And what happens is they start forming colonies. And those colonies get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually it starts to eat into the tooth surface because it's created such a, um, a prime environment for that bacteria to grow. And that's when people start to develop caries or cavities. Um, one of the ways that we prevent that is through oral hygiene instruction and through brushing and washing and everything because it only takes two to four minutes for that pellicle to start forming. Um, but another thing that happens is um, when that bacteria start forming, it doesn't just form on the tooth surface. Um, have you all heard of gingivitis and periodontitis? Okay, gingivitis can form within two to three weeks of someone not controlling that bacteria well. And what happens is it gets underneath the gum line of your teeth and it just starts to grow and grow and grow and it causes a lot of inflammation and redness and sensitivity in that area because your blood supply is trying to bring all those lymphocytes into that area to remove that bacteria and so it causes it to be inflamed. Um, also, there is a structure around your teeth. So your teeth just aren't like sitting in bone. They have a periodontal ligament that surrounds them and that bacteria likes to come in in between that tooth and that, bo that bone and eat away the periodontal ligament. And that's when people start to have like <coughs> shifting teeth because that bacteria is going in around the tooth and it's eating away that periodontal ligament um, that's giving it that support. And that's what we call periodontitis. That is irreversible. Gingivitis, two to three weeks of good care, you can reverse it. Periodontitis, you start losing um, that periodontal ligament and that bone starts to be resorbed and that's irreversible. And a lot of times that's when people decide to get dentures. Um, if you look on your sheet, <coughs> um, on some of the signs of discomfort, if someone leaves their denture in overnight, or if they're real self-conscious about it and they don't take it out, that causes that tissue to become very irritated and agitated. It can cause um, candidiasis which is another picture here, because your body doesn't have the ability to flush all those bacteria, or if someone has xerostomia, which means they don't produce enough saliva, it's not keeping their oral cavity lubricated enough to eliminate that kind of bacteria. Um, but with the denture stomatitis, you wanna be really careful and encourage your patient to leave their denture out at night, because it will cause a lot of sensitivity, it'll be very painful, and um, food and things can get trapped up in there and it can cause other diseases. Now, this other picture that's here is called um, peri-implant disease. 
And so like Maria was talking about with the partial implants and things and having the canine teeth, um, the difference between having a regular denture that just snaps onto your teeth and having a denture with implants in it is your implants don't have that periodontal ligament. So it's just drilled straight into your bone. And what happens is if your bone decides to reject it, there's nothing there that's going to help um, clean that surface out. And so it becomes very inflamed. The tissues around it start to overgrow um, and your body rejects it. And it can be very complicated and very painful for the patient. Um, and we're going to show you how to do an intraoral exam. <laughs> how to do uh, a cancer screening or to check for any kind of complications that you might have with your dentures. How are you doing today, Miss Maria? Good. Doing well? Okay. Um, do you all carry flashlights on you whenever you go to check your patients? Some of you? Not all of you? Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my cell phone, because we all have our cell phones on. Never, <laughs> not at work, right? No, not at work. <laughs> not on the floor. Okay, it's okay. Oh, I'll hold it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, you open your mouth, please. We're going to check on the lips and everything and make sure that there are no sores and that there are no strange colorations. Can you tilt up for me? Tilt your neck up for me so I can see a little bit. Okay, and you're going to check inside the buccal mucosa, which is inside the cheek to make sure that there are no um, strange spots, no purple or um, red angry areas. You're gonna check both buccal mucosa. You're gonna pull the lip out and you're gonna check here. That's called the vestibule area where your um, the bone from your teeth and your lip tissue meet. And you're gonna check up here as well. for me. You're going to check the roof of your mouth all the way back. Okay. Lift your tongue for me. Check the floor of their mouth. Make sure that there's nothing like swollen or inflamed. Now, if you check at the roof of the mouth, sometimes you'll see um, a hard bony structure and that's considered normal anatomy. But if you're unsure about it, you can ask um, your the lady who comes through and checks. Um, to double check and just look at it, put a note on that. Okay. Okay, and you also want to be sure that you check your tongue. Generally, you would have a gauze or something, and you would ask her to stick her tongue out and look on the, pull it out real tough, and look on the sides of the tongue, all the way in the back border, because that's the most common site for um, oral cancer, is on the lateral borders of the tongue. And so you just want to be careful and check that to make sure that there's nothing there. And as long as there are not, no inflamed structures or anything, you can check. And that's, real, that's a real easy way to do an intraoral exam um, if your patient's complaining of any discomfort or anything. Can you hold that for me, please? I'll go ahead and take off my gloves. And Ms. Janiko. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about oral hygiene instruction. And this is what I want you to relate to your patients on how to um, brush, take care of dentures, all that good stuff. And I printed all of y'all out a copy so you can keep it. Okay. <laughs> We're just gonna go over this. And it's gonna help a lot, a lot when you're um, taking care of your patients. All right, so we're gonna start at the top. All right, so brushing. 
All right, so you want to choose it for each patient is going to be different. You want to choose the, tooth for the toothpaste that is best for your patient. So if your patient is sensitive, you want to you want to choose the, um, like a Sensodyne toothpaste. If your patient has um, plaque buildup, you want to choose a toothpaste for that. If your patient has dry mouth, you want to choose something like Biotin, which is made for patients that have dry mouth because most patients, older patients, they're going to be on a lot of medications, medications, and medications cause that dry mouth. And you want to make sure you dedicate, um, have the right toothpaste that dedicates to that. All right, so the purpose for brushing is going to reduce oral mouth odor, which comes from the tongue. Most mouth odor comes from the tongue. And then it's going to help with hypersensitivity. So if your patient has that sensitivity I was talking about, you're going to use that Sensodyne. It's going to help for that. It's also going to reduce gingivitis and inflammation. So it's going to go down there and get all of that plaque from right underneath the gum line that causes that irritation, inflammation, which is gingivitis. And it's going to remove extrinsic stain. So if your patient is a coffee drinker or a tea drinker, toothpaste is going to help remove that. And it's also going to re so our, en our um, enamel, sometimes it can demineralize. If you're like drinking something that's acidic or something that's really sugary, it'll break down the enamel, which is the hardest surface on the tooth. So that's what makes our teeth look white. So it'll break that down, but the toothpaste will help remineralize it. So it'll bring it back to where it needs to be. Um, and it'll also um, reduce the calculus formation. And calculus, if you don't know what calculus is, it's another word for tartar. So it's like if you have plaque on your teeth and you're not effectively getting the plaque off, it turns into calculus which is hard and you have to come to your dental hygienist to get that out. All right, so you wanna instruct your patients to brush for two minutes. Two minutes is gonna ensure that they cover every surface of the tooth, okay? So every surface of the tooth in the mouth and all of the teeth. So you want them to skip the back teeth because we can't see them. Because some people are like, oh, let me just brush the front because nobody can see the back, but that's very important because you got all types of bacteria that's living in your mouth that you don't know about. All right, so you wanna brush, you wanna tell your patients to brush morning and night. Night is the most important time of the day to brush because you just think like, if you're sleeping, you got all these germs in your mouth having like a whole, they eating off this buffet in your mouth or whatever you ate that day, they're having fun in your mouth while you're sleeping. And all that bacteria is getting into your gums and it can cause periodontal disease, which can be gingivitis or periodontitis. Gingivitis is a reversible, periodontitis is not. All right, so I'm gonna show you, well, they're gonna show you how I want you to brush and I'll just explain. So I want you to show your patients this way, and it's, it's not that hard, I promise, it's not that hard. So, you wanna get the bristles of your toothbrush to be pointing at a 45 degree angle at the gum line, okay? So this is at the gum line. You want to wiggle the bristles. You don't wanna move the whole toothbrush, just wiggle the bristles, and it's gonna get that plaque from right underneath the gum line, in which some people, like if you're just brushing back and forth, you're not getting plaque from underneath the gum line, that's what causes that gingivitis. So you wanna wiggle, and then you wanna swoop down. So you wiggle, that's gonna, that's gonna disrupt the plaque biofilm and then it's gonna get it out when it sweeps down, okay? So this is called the modified BAS method, which you see on your paper. And you want to make sure that your patient is using a soft toothbrush. And when, when you're brushing, you wanna make sure you get all the surfaces. So even when you're doing like the body surface, uh, surfaces, which we call the occlusals, you wanna do circular motions, okay? Then you wanna, you wanna do the um, toe of the toothbrush to get right behind the back teeth behind the front teeth, I'm sorry. You wanna use the toe of the um, toothbrush. So just making sure that the patient is covering all surfaces, okay? You wanna get all your teeth some love. You only get one set, okay? Even if you miss a few, you only get one set. Okay, so don't forget to um, brush the tongue, because which I said, that's where most of the um, oral mouth odor lives. Bad breath germs lives within the tongue. So you wanna make sure the patient is brushing their tongue. And also change the toothbrush every three months because the bristles on the toothbrush, if you're brushing your teeth morning and night, after three months, the bristles aren't gonna be any more good. So you wanna get a new toothbrush. Cause the nylon is like, they're gonna start, you know how old toothbrush look, it's all spritzed out and all of that. And it's not effectively cleaning your teeth if it looks like that. You want it to look like this. All right, so for patients who are unable to grasp, this is called a manual toothbrush. If they're unable to grasp that, and it's too much work for them to do what I just said, the modified bass method, you can get a power toothbrush, just an electronic toothbrush. And with an electronic toothbrush, you're not doing that much work. You literally put it on the tooth and the toothbrush does the work. So just put it on each surface and you just leave it there. And then you go on to the next tooth. So you don't have to do any circular motions. You don't have to do any sweeping. You don't have to do any of that because a power toothbrush does the job on its own. And they do have toothbrushes if your patient is able to manually brush their teeth, but they might have some arthritis and it's difficult for them to grasp it. Um, they do have toothbrushes with bigger handles that they can use mm -hmm. that'll make it more comfortable and easier for them. 
So that's an option too. Mm -hmm. All right, so after brushing, we, all, we always recommend flossing, okay? So you wanna floss every, not every time after you brush, but at least once a day. And I would suggest flossing at night because like I said, those germs are in your mouth having a party. So the reason we floss is because your toothbrush doesn't reach everything in between the tooth. It reaches everything on the tooth surface. So if, even if you're brushing your teeth, you still have plaque left or you still have something left inside of your teeth. So um, flossing is a great uh, habit to pick up and it's gonna prevent that gingivitis. Okay, and, and uh, floss can also get rid of gingivitis as well. So um, you wanna use a C-shaped flossing method and what she's gonna show you, y'all wanna go closer? Um, they're gonna show you what a C-shaped flossing method is. So you wanna go down, not too hard, but you wanna go down between the two. They can't see that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna have to oh, do okay. it again. We gotta move I'm gonna say, I'm gonna Yes, ma'am. But um, so you wanna go down between the two. You wanna hug the two. So you're gonna create a C and you're gonna hug the two. And then you're gonna hug it on the opposite side as well and you just come out. So you wanna make sure you're getting right beneath the gum line. So it's gonna help get that plaque that you couldn't get with your toothbrush. It's gonna get that right between between the teeth, which is called the interproximals, and right beneath the gum line. And it's a lot easier to do on an actual patient than trying to show it on a model, I promise. <laughs> yeah. So that's the C-shaped flossing method. Okay. Did you wanna show the model? So she's gonna, I'll explain it again. She's gonna go in between the two. Let's get a little bit closer. She's gonna hug the two, creating a C, and she's gonna go right beneath the gum line. And it's just gonna go back and hug the, the tooth that's next to it, go underneath the gum line, and she'll come out. And that is called the C-shaped flossing method. And you wanna teach your patients this. It's, it's really not that hard. Like once you get a hang of it, it's really like, it's pretty easy. And I also say wax floss, this is wax floss here. It's the best option because it'll prevent your gingiva um, from tearing up. Like it'll, like if you have floss that doesn't have any wax on it, it can, it can tear up your gingiva. It can put those little, um, it can just cause trauma. You don't want to cause trauma for yourself. Um, and also a mouth rinse is very, very important. So you want to use a fluoridated mouth rinse. And the mouth rinse is also going to help like um, remineralize the enamel on the teeth. Um, and then you wanna use that mouth rinse twice a day. So after you brush, always use mouth rinse because just think like, even all those, those you have floating bacteria in your mouth as well. So that's gonna, a mouthwash will help get that out as well. And um, so you wanna use the best mouthwash that suits your patient. If your patient has dry mouth, there's biotin, dry, um, biotin mouth rinse, you can use that. Um, and then like if your patient is sensitive to alcohol, you just use a Listerine with no alcohol. Um, if it's a child, you wanna use ACT. So you want to do whatever is, you know, for your patient. I know you deal with the elderly patients, but that's just like me telling you the different types of mouthwash. And Listerine also has a new mouthwash for um, sensitivity. So it's like, it's a bunch of options out there. So you just want to tailor it um, to your patient. Um, then, and you don't want to rinse with water after you use a mouthwash because it kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. Like if you're using mouthwash and then you go back in with water, the mouthwash doesn't have time to do its job. All right, so our reason for coming today is to talk about dentures. All right, so important tips about dentures. So daily personal debris and biofilm removal is a major step in making sure the patient is comfortable and making sure the denture lasts for a very long time because dentures are very expensive and you don't want to, um, you don't want to keep buying dentures. So you want to make sure you take care of it. All right, and for, for cleaning dentures, you wanna use the proper rinsing, immersing, and brushing methods to make sure, like I said, to make sure they last a long time. So it's important, even though you do have dentures, if you have a partial, it's important to maintain your natural teeth as well. So whatever teeth you have um, remaining in your mouth, you wanna make sure um, the patients are taking care of those too. So don't neglect those natural teeth just because you have dentures. And just because the patient has dentures, you don't want to assume that they know how to take care of them. Because, I mean, when they went to the dentist and they first got dentures, it could probably, it can get, you know, people forget things all the time. So they probably forgot how to take care of them or how to, you know, effectively do everything to make sure their dentures are um, clean and healthy. Or they don't realize the importance of keeping them clean. They don't know that calculus and things can build up on your dentures just like it can on your natural teeth. All right. So, um... 
when you clean, if you're cleaning a patient's dentures or they're cleaning their own dentures, make sure they do rinse their mouth out before reinserting the denture. Because if you're gonna clean the denture, but you're reinserting it on top of bacteria, it's kind of like defeating the purpose again. Like you know what I mean? Like when I was talking about mouth rinse. So you wanna make sure they are brushing their gums. Um, if they do have a, even if they have a partial, you still wanna make sure they're brushing whatever teeth they have left. And if they don't have any teeth at all, you know, just clean those gums off to make sure um, the dentures are fitting properly. All right, and then you want to clean full dentures. You want to make sure you're cleaning them multiple times a day. So um, probably like after eating, just rinse them or just sit them in the, um, like we have polydent, you, could, you know polydent and water, I'm pretty sure you probably know polydent is. You can just sit it in that and um, to clean those throughout the day. Partials, you don't have to clean multiple times a day, but full dentures, definitely, you want to clean those um, before and after, well, after eating in at that time. And then, um, so, you know, Full dentures and I mean partial dentures too. They you can use polygrip to make sure they're fitting correctly to make it fit more like a suction in your mouth. So polygrip is sometimes you can have that left on your denture. So that's another reason for cleaning it off because you can have some of this adhesive left and you don't want that on there. So that that can also carry bacteria that can be harmful to your patient's health. And make sure the dentures are being removed at night. You don't want your patients to sleep with dentures in their mouth. Like she um, mentioned, you can get um, candidiasis in the mouth. So you wanna make sure they're not sleeping with that because their gingiva needs to be able to breathe because it's something sitting on their gingiva all day. So you want to be able to um, it clean, make sure you're cleaning the gums effectively and making sure um doesn't get back candidi candidiasis or any type of bacteria. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you how to um, clean a partial. So, Everyone knows what a partial looks like. Here's a partial. Here's another one. But you gotta be really careful with the partials because they're thinner, they're made of this metal material, and if you bend it, it won't fit properly back into the mouth. So you wanna make sure you're like really taking care of these and not holding them too tight or anything. All right, so you wanna take the partial out of the patient's mouth and you wanna rinse it underneath the um, fluoridated water, which is just the sink. Um, you wanna rinse it. And then, but understand that when you rinse it, it's not removing biofilm. And biofilm is just plaque and bacteria, so it's not removing that. So you have to go in and use a brush. So that's our next step. You're gonna use the brush. So just that, like I have like a faucet in here, so I don't like running water. All right, so you're gonna get this. This is a denture brush. We, you don't use this on your regular teeth. This is specifically for dentures. And so you just like, you wanna do little circular motions on it. You want to do little circular motions and then in smaller spots. And some partials have clasps on them. And clasps are very fragile. So um, I don't have a clasp brush with me today, but clasp brushes are really important because um, this brush can damage the clasp. Like it can be too hard on the, um, on the clasp of the denture. So you just want to do like little circular motions because sometimes after you run it, you still have some plaque left on the denture. Because I mean, they eat with this just like they eat with their regular teeth. All right, so, and then you wanna immerse it. So it says after denture have been cleaned by rinsing and brushing, you wanna put it in a dental solution. So you'll put it in the poly, the poly dent. So let me go get some water. I'm just gonna put the tablet in there. Also, when you're rinsing out your partials or your dentures, you want to make sure that you have a cloth in the sink because if that were to fall out of your mm -hmm. hand, it could damage the denture. And they're very expensive to replace. All right, so while this is um, doing its thing, do you guys have any questions about dentures or how to teach your patients how to care for their dentures? Or is there anything that we've discussed that you're not quite clear on that we can clarify for you? Do most of your patients have dentures? Yep. Mm -hmm. So do they care for their own dentures or do you all care for their we dentures? Do. We do. So how are you doing it right now? The Anybody care to tell me how you're doing it right now? The way you explained, we did it in our classes, so we still did it. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That is great to hear, actually. It's really good to hear. So, I mean, it feels like really, you know, patient pressure. I will, you know, drop it in here. And just take it out. So if it's um, at bedtime, my patient is going to sleep, they've taken their denture out, I would just drop it in here like this, and it can stay in there overnight. 
okay? Staying overnight. So the way you clean a partial is not the same way you clean a denture. So you guys see it on your paper. I'm going to go through how you clean a full denture. So there's two methods. You can either immerse it in the poly dent or you can just use the brushing method. So if you're using it by just placing it in the poly dent, you're going to place the denture in a plastic container with a well-fitted cover. So I don't have a cover here for demonstration purposes, but you want to have a cover over it. Um, you want to use warm water. You don't want to use hot water because it can distort the denture. So you don't want to use that. All right. Then you want to follow the manufacturer's um, instructions. So every, um, every product has different manufacturer instructions. So make sure you keep an eye on that and try not to like move too fast. Like if it's not poly dent and, poly and you're using another product, you want to make sure you're using whatever that product says um, do. Um, and then you want to make sure that the entire denture is underneath the solution. You want to make sure anything is um, coming out to make sure it's being fully um, cleaned properly. Um, and then when it's removed, you want to rinse it under that running water and make sure it's not hot. You want to make sure you place, like she was saying, you want to place a towel in the sink because dentures are very, very fragile. And if you drop it, it'll have something soft to fall on and not just the sink, okay? Because that'll, that'll definitely break the denture. And like I said, they are very expensive. And then, um, once you run it underneath the water, you want to get the brush. I don't have a full inch with me right now, but you want to get the brush and you just want to go over a little small surface to get whatever leftover debris or leftover plaque is there. You want to get that off, okay? So then you want to empty the container. You want you don't want to use the same solution two days, two days in a row. So you always empty out, empty out that solution. Make sure you clean the container. And the next day, you'll um, you know do a different solution and make sure you aren't um, cross-contamination or any microorganisms is getting into that new one the next day. So you can also clean a full denture by just brushing it, okay? So you want to spread the towel out just like I, you know, we did with the one we were immersing. So you want to spread a towel out or a rubber mat at the bottom of the sink, all right? So you want to partially fill the sink with water, all right? So the, um, when it does fall, it'll fall in that water and then have that cushion too, so it won't break. Um, you want to hold the denture. You don't want to grasp it too hard, but you want to hold it like this. This is just like it's a full denture. You want to hold it like this, but not too tight because you can break it. Okay, so not too tight. So, and then you want to apply warm water. Remember, no hot water because it will distort the denture. And um, this is considered a non-abrasive cleaner. And you never want to use toothpaste on a denture because it's just too abrasive for the denture. Like denture is made out of porcelain. Our teeth is enamel and our teeth is way harder than that. So <laughs> that's why we have toothpaste, but you don't want to use it on a denture. It's two totally different um, materials. Because what will happen is it'll put little scrapes on those teeth on that denture and it'll retain more bacteria than um, is necessary and we want to prevent that. And just like um, when you're brushing your teeth, you want to cover all surfaces of the denture. When you're brushing the denture, try not, you just want to just keep examining, you know, as much as possible. At least examine it twice. And um, make sure you're getting all the biofilm off, all the plaque, any any food that's on the um, denture. Make sure you're getting all of that off. And with this brush, and it's just like a smaller areas. And this is just like if you want to just, you know, do little tiny tiny circles is always the best option in my opinion. Because sometimes when you're just going back and forth, it doesn't really get the job done. But if you're going like little circles, you're covering more surface area. If that makes sense. And then, um, so you want to rinse the denture after you do the warm water. And soak it you want to you want to take it out rinse it and like I say you just want to visually inspect to make sure there's nothing left on it and then um, teach the patient to like if this was a, this was a full denture teach the patient to run their finger over it or if you you say you care for your patient dentures as well so just run your finger over you if it's not smooth it's not clean so you run your finger over it and if it's not clean you just get your brush again just go over it and it shouldn't take that many times probably like twice and so um I'm gonna take this out Blue. Is that the one with this? Uh, you have. I don't know. But so this is the um the partial sitting here. So y'all can see it. And this is great. Just oh thank you. And then this is great to um sit overnight. That's fine. You can sit overnight. And if it was a um full denture, it can sit overnight as well. So they just take it out. So I'm taking if I'm taking this out of the um of the the solution, I would rinse it and then I'll just go in and get like whatever's extra left. I just do little small circles like this. 
because this immersion is not going to get off everything mm -hmm. but it is going to like if it's plaque on it's going to shake the plaque off and um at least shake it up and make it softer in case it has anything on it so we just do little little small circles like that so any questions no you sure no questions no concerns mm -hmm. So this paper is perfect if y'all want to carry around, you know, like you have a day where you have to check your patient's oral cavity, you can carry this paper around and then just look at it, you know what I mean? And just check, like even the the um, the um pamphlet that you got, just take it with you and use it on a daily basis. And after a while, you won't even need the paper anymore. You're just like, I got this. I know how to um, tell my patient how to brush or how to brush my patient. Yes, and on that paper also, underneath the uh, intraoral exam, um, there's A, B, C, D, T. Those are things you want to look for. Um, if you find any kind of spots or anything in your patient's mouth, mouth um, that you feel like you need someone else to check out, make sure it's not cancerous. If they have a sore spot that doesn't go away after about two weeks, then they need some extra help. They need a professional to come in and check it out. Okay. All right, any questions? Okay. All right, well, thank you, All right, all thank you for, for having us. Today. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Excellent.